Hi all, welcome to Show Studio's Live Review Series. I'm Show Studio Fashion Editor Georgie Evans and I'm joined by Show Studio content editor Callum Knight. Hiya. And we are going to be rounding up Paris Autumn 2020 Women's Wear for you. It's been a long old week, <laughs> um, but we're really excited to talk about it. Um, one of the main things this week was coronavirus. <laughs> kind of dominated the week. Everyone running around in masks and hand sanitizer on seats at, in, at the shows. Lots of dropping out. Yeah, lots of people worried that we wouldn't have Chanel this morning. At the beginning of the week, this is by the end of the week, it will all be gone. Um, but no, everyone has kind of continued, kept calm, and I think everyone's just really waiting for actual information to come out about yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. But it has been one of those things that's really... It's funny during Fashion Week, it's such a bubble, but just as soon as that gets burst, you see people really, really panic. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's been a very, very odd week. And, and you know, obviously incredibly sad in some ways. Um, but, yeah, there's really been a lot of... A lot of fear. A lot of fear. Especially, were you in Milan? Were you in Milan? Are you patient zero? Lots of wearing of masks. And as I said, hand sanitizer pretty much on the entrance Everywhere. to every single show, which is great. Um, but also, yeah, a bit of a foreboding cloud over Paris Fashion Week. Um, bright sunshine to break through that cloud, though, was the appearance of Kanye. <laughs> um, really, really excited. Uh, he's decided to show Yeezy Season 8 in Paris for the first time ever and also to host a Sunday service. So that was a really nice treat for all of the press yeah. um, this year. I mean, on the Friday, I think, invites started going out and it was all very hush-hush. You could see everyone was whispering and talking about something. And it was, Who, who's the PR? How, how do I get in contact? How how do I make sure that I'm there? I must see Kanye. <laughs> I must see him. But actually, it was around Duns. He also went to Balenciaga. Yeah. <laughs> it was at like, dinner somewhere around the corner. Um, but no, I mean, there is... Everyone loves loves our job, but there is something when a Kanye or a Rihanna come into the sphere that, that even sends, sends all the editors kind of a bit bananas. One, because obviously they're such huge stories. I mean, if you think how wide the realm of fashion is, music's so much bigger. So actually mm. for websites and magazines, they sell more, click more, you know, there's all of that kind of interaction that is still kind of unknown to fashion. Even with something as big as a Chanel show is nothing as big as an easy show in terms of interaction and how much people care. I mean, we saw that just from our Instagram stories last night. Yeah, absolutely. And the crowd outside the Yeezy show. Just even the presence of Miss Northwest <laughs> sent, like, for everyone who's normally very well to do and put together yeah. into an absolute meltdown, <laughs> um, which is also a joy to see. <laughs> we, we like that. Um, so that was amazing. Some themes over the Paris Fashion Week were was sex. We had quite a lot of sex appeal, lots of lingerie inspired, lots of leg, lots of um, wet focus on the waist. Mugler did it um, arguably more explicitly than the rest mm. with lots of suspender skirts pulled from the archive and revamped. Um, kind of suspenders built into the outfit, but um, low and sheer. We had Saint Laurent, obviously very, very known for leggy and latex, and it all got very, um, very kinky, very luby at Saint Laurent. Um, <laughs> and yeah. then we jumped onto Rick Owens, who just decided trousers were not in his, not <laughs> in his, anymore. yes, he was done with those. <laughs> um, looking, kind of taking on the shapes from the men's that had been inspired by David Bowie's jumpsuits, but just turning that into beautiful knitted dresses that just hung around one leg. It was, I mean, Rick Owens was really a highlight of the Absolute season. Absolute highlight of and, the season. And I mean, Rick doing sexy is just so beautiful and so exciting because yeah. it's such a new take on, you know, what, you know, where you define, you know, how you define it. Yeah. It's so exciting. So good. See. Lots of clear plastics as well. So you kind of see like slightly sweaty feet and stuff like that, which is, which <laughs> is like that's on you. definitely someone's kink, <laughs> but not mine. <laughs> um, and also Olivia Thayskin's, um, one of my favorites, just beautiful, beautiful cinched waist, slimline silks, amazing leather coats. It was just that kind of power sex appeal that um, was underlying throughout the collection, which was pretty much all black. Mm. Super mysterious, super... Hook and eye, his, his kind of usual hook and eye closures, this idea, idea that the slip of a hand will take yes. this coat away. Absolutely. You know, and you could, it's super quiet music, so you could hear the heels on the floor, just kind of all of those nods, hints, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, it was a little bit secretary. Um, but in a good way. Um, and then finally we had Junior, um, which was kind of an unorthodox sex. It was themed around Blondie. Um, so we had smeared lipstick, but lots of leather harnesses and cherry reds and cascading tools and kind of crazy bed heads. It was, it was kind of sexy punk rockabilly. Mm. Um, I didn't give a fuck and you shouldn't either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, moving slightly away from sex, um, we had some really, really impressive casting changes this season. Lots of brands moving into being more inclusive, which is absolutely, um, should be the precedent, shouldn't be, really be something we have to bring up in a roundup, no. but um, we're thrilled that this, these are making the difference. Um, one of the big standouts was this morning, um, Chanel, who cast a plus size model, and a plus size model, um, Jill Cordleve, who is the first plus size model to walk Chanel in 10 years. That's insane. Which is bananas. That is bananas. And the one thing I, <laughs> the one thing, one of the main things I don't get is that how customers are still accepting not being represented. Mm. It's, you know, I just, I don't, and I don't understand how a brand can look at the range of beautiful shapes and sizes that they make their clothes for in the end and think that they, that those same people don't want to see more representation on it. It just, I surely by this point. Yeah. And look at, it, why do we have to wait for fast fashion brands like Pretty Little Things to be doing the most amazing inclusive ranges and fashions still, like high fashion still not see how important that is to apply it. I know. It's bananas. Insane. Well, some people who were snapping up and paying attention, um, Loewe had an incredibly impressive number of POC models. Absolutely round of applause for Loewe, please keep it up. Um, also Valentino, the whole theme around the show of Valentino was originality and individuality and showing that through a uniform because when you all wear similar things or a uniform, it's about your personality that shines through and that kind of removes the need of gender. So there was amazing casting, um, a lot of tran trans models walking and it was just really beautiful to see. Um, and then also McQueen, who's really, Sarah's really carved herself out as mm. someone who celebrates all sizes on the runway. Yeah, and in, and in stores. And in stores, And yeah. that's the classic McQueen suit. We say it in the review, <clears throat> just looks amazing on all shapes. It's so, mm. so form-fitting, but also so just... Uh, go and have a look, it's pretty Go and have a look. <laughs> and um, yes, Paloma walked from... Uh, Paloma Lesser, is that her surname? Mm -hmm. um, walked for McQueen for the first time, which was really something. I think quite a lot of people were crying backstage yeah. with emotion, which is really gorgeous. Um, also another theme this this season was me, myself and I, lots of people <laughs> referencing themselves. Um, beautifully, arguably the best of the bunch that we're going to read out is Com, who was looking back into the archives and saying nothing is new and therefore I will look at, I will look at my past, um, which was just beautiful. Yeah, I mean, a Com collection is always pretty hard to sum up, it, mm. can I, can, I cannot wait for the show but I always dread the review because it is so, <laughs> trying to summarise this in a, such a short amount of time, but just these incredible new propositions, always, always really mysterious, you're always second guessing yourself and that's part of the fun mm. of this, of these collections, it's just a joy to behold and for anyone who loves fashion, seeing those little hints to different collections all throughout, um, Ray's career is just it's fashion wears Wally. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also had Dior uh, being very self-referential, looking to Maria's teen years and childhood and her kind of political influence. Um, this was a little bit mishmash. What I did like was that you could see her eyeliner and a lot of the models wearing her kind of <laughs> hairstyle. Um, so that was quite sweet. Um, but yeah, not so sure on the whole um, art slogans as. Maria's reference. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very large conversation. It's a conversation. very large conversation. Go large and check out a review go if you check want to out see that the review. But there was, she brought in a lot of amazing artists, but there is a large conversation going on at the moment, especially in the run-up to International Women's Day, on what is representation and what is um, appropriation of female yes. and feminist art. Yes, and I think looking to yourself doesn't really give you a green, <laughs> green card. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry, we won't ramble on about that one. Um, we also had Kenneth Iser and Tabu Magagu who self-referenced looking back to um, their families and their nieces and nephews. Tebe's um, presentation had actual members of his family's pictures on the wall, which was amazing. And he often designs with his the women in his family in mind, which was amazing. And having Kenneth's debut in as a catwalk in Paris fashion was so exciting. He ha runs his own... Um, he has his own weavers who are making his own fabrics and it's amazing to see kind of um, all these traditions brought into Paris and shown to editors alongside all of, within the gilded walls of Paris where they have obviously their own couture traditions and actually to have that contrast I thought was really exciting and I hope he stays here or yeah, at least um, has some activity in Paris every season because it's a real 
uplifting show, especially because it kicked off the week. Yeah, it kicked off the week and also everyone absolutely loves it. <laughs> um, there's a huge hurrah around it, so I fingers and toes crossed it kind of stays. Um, also, Rick Owens, as we mentioned before, self-referential, the collection was based on his obsession with Gary Newman and how much that had shaped his childhood, so there was a unique soundtrack that we got to hear during the collection, which was fantastic. Um, and also Haida, <laughs> um, <laughs> who, who doesn't have really a, have, have a theme, but at one the point... most specific theme, yeah. At one point thought, this coat would look better if I put all my favourite songs on the back <laughs> of it, which we're down for. <laughs> Absolutely down for. So there was like Private Dancer, there was, I think there was some Mariah Carey on there, there was some Dolly Parton, just embroidered on the back of some kimono-shaped jackets, um, which was kind of amazing. You, yeah. can't, you can't help but... Um, <laughs> love that and also Celine um, is always a bit re referential we think yeah well it's, it's Eddie uh, Celine is Eddie's world and you're not gonna change that <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um, <clears throat> thinking about some trends that we've been seeing um, I know I'm just slightly biased but cherry red has been a huge theme in this collection actually all the way throughout the month yeah all the way throughout uh, this collection this season <laughs> This season, all the way throughout, not just in Paris, but it really, really came. It was, there was no denying it in Paris. Um, Givenchy had so much of this block tone cherry red um, throughout. There was one look that Cara Gerber wore that was absolutely splendid, and um, she was kind of referencing all these fantastic, um, strong artists. And cherry red being quite a key colour um, throughout that collection, so that was gorgeous. Obviously, McQueen referenced Wales. Mm. Um, and the red houses that these country, are not animal. Country, not the animal. <laughs> and um, how red used to um, be a colour for protection, and also the you know the Welsh, red Welsh dragon, pretty key there. <laughs> um, who else used cherry red? Oh, Valentino, lots of red Valentino. And also um, noir, who not not yeah noir yeah, had it. Yeah, yeah. Um, noir, who obviously, as you can imagine, the name insinuates black, but <laughs> red was brought in because red can be used to make black. So we had these beautiful ombres and kind of. Um, huge cloud-like forms around the model that totally disintegrated into nothing. Yeah, um, that was fantastic. incredibly beautiful and also so fun to see Noir do red Noir. And, and still keep it black somehow. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah still it keep was that like one. red is black, but it was a, <laughs> it was really really fantastic. The structures that Noir, Noir Kane and Amiya comes up with is just yeah otherworldly. Um, and finally, um, we it would be remiss to talk about Autumn Winter Twenty without talking about environmental impact and sustainability. Of course, Stella McCartney is on the Paris schedule um, and this collection she made a real point about hammering home that Stella McCartney has been fur, feathers and skin free since 2001 and by doing that she had kind of animal mascots running amongst Amber Valletta on the runway. <laughs> um, which was a bit hit and miss for me but um, a really impressive feat nonetheless to have gone that long without. Yeah. And without. I think in this industry and just in life you need to you need to put your money where your mouth is. You yeah. need to start and shout for what you believe in. And she has been doing it for so long yeah. that I think, you know, I think everyone's looking up to her um, to kind of see what's going on. And also that conversation is two ways. And I believe that she's pretty open with people critiquing her environmental structure and kind of giving her new ideas, which mm. is amazing to see kind of a stalwart of the environmental fashion industry kind of still wanting to speak to younger designers and find out you know what can be done what yeah. more can we do speaking of what can we do the amazing john gatley on at margela <laughs> red chicla <laughs> red chicla uh, which is a play on um oh what's it a play on replica replica thank you sorry it's, it's been, been a long, long day, day. <laughs> <laughs> So Red Chicla is um, sourcing vintage pieces. John Galliano is going to source them himself. And then they get taken back to the atelier and reworked. Um, and then they get the Red Chicla stamp on them. Um, so this collection was peppered with Red Chicla items. Sometimes just a collar on a jacket. Sometimes leathers found to make new bags. And then these are going to be sold off in different areas. They're going to be part of the collection. Reworked, kind of chosen by John. What could be more exciting? I mean, what more do you want? <laughs> so if you're yeah. out personally picked up and sewn by John you don't get that and ready to wear that is a couture couture level couture levels and also Galliano was saying in his wonderful podcast that he does for Margiela every season it's about buying something to invest in buying something to care and hand down and to um to love and I think that Richie Claire really is that thing you would buy that one-off unique item and treasure it always so it I also think it's really exciting to see a business that, you know, Margiela's big, it's not huge, huge, but still a really well-respected business 
being okay with playing around with business structures like that because you know this is a huge huge risk for them Um, and to go so public with it and actually just to be like this is what we believe in and we're gonna you know put our energy behind it is really really exciting and I hope inspires businesses kind of of all scales you know they're obviously sometimes things that it's not easy to change your business to make it greener but Mm. you at least have to try yeah take a whack at it um, and thinking about greener and the environmental impact, um, one of the hugely standout shows of the season was Balenciaga, whose set was incredible, um, commenting on the future of the world as we know it, the rising sea levels, um, huge screens on the ceiling, projecting kind of twirling, foreboding skies, um, and models were walking on water as the first three rows or two rows of seats were submerged. Super incredible. The clothes were insanely good that's so beautiful I mean this beautiful beautiful stretch stretch jersey I believe suiting that just really is so hard to do and so beautiful and I just can't wait for them to, to show their couture collection in July oh my god I'm so excited their <laughs> first couture collection since Christopher himself I believe yeah I think so oh my god Big and news. it's going to be one to watch <laughs> so an amazing season in Paris actually lots of interesting things to talk about um, if you want to look at any of these in depth reviews because we've reviewed each of the brands individually head to showstudio.com and if you are watching through YouTube which I suspect you are um, make sure to subscribe like and comment and we'll see you very soon